In this lesson, we're going to look at the resources required for a virtual machine. Now, we often think about the virtual machine resource. This one seems fairly obvious. We pick a certain SKU, a certain size, and we have that actual resource in Azure that is the virtual machine. But realize there are other resources that the VM may interact with that are required for it to actually function. Now, firstly, remember when we create a virtual machine, it lives within a certain subscription. So there's a subscription we have, and it has to exist in a specific resource group, just like everything else. And it's gonna be deployed to a certain region. Now, if I think about the virtual machine, well, it runs an operating system. So at minimum, we're gonna need an operating system managed disk. So this managed disk is itself an Azure resource that we're gonna to connect to that virtual machine. Now there is an exception to this. We can use something called an ephemeral disk. An ephemeral disk is not a managed disk. Instead, it's using the capacity in the host for either cache or the temporary disk to store that operating system. Realize the downside of that is if I deallocate and stop paying for the VM, I lose all of that state of the operating system. But if it is something that isn't stateful, maybe an AKS work node or part of a VM scale set, and I don't care about the operating system disk state, and it can just get recreated every time it starts, then that ephemeral disk might be okay. For a regular VM though, we're gonna have a managed disk that hosts the operating system. We may also have one or more optional data disks. We wanna separate out our data disks from our operating system disk. We may have different caching options, for example. And so when I think of that, well, I'm paying for those things. I pay for the VM and I pay for the OS disk. I pay for the optional data disks I might have. That virtual machine requires connectivity. There's going to be a virtual network. In that virtual network, we define it up into subnets. And so on that virtual machine, we're going to attach to it a virtual NIC. That virtual NIC will connect to a particular subnet in a particular virtual network. So that NIC is its own resource. The virtual network is its own resource. Now we don't pay for virtual networks. We don't pay for the NICs. We do pay for egress traffic going out of the region. We do pay for AZ to AZ communications, different availability zones, although at the time of recording, that is not yet being billed. We pay for traffic that goes over peered connections. We pay for traffic over private endpoints. Now additionally, as part of that NIC, there are IP configurations, and we may optionally have things like a public IP that is again its own resource that we may bind to one of those IP configurations. So it has an instance level public IP. So once again, that public IP is its own resource. Additionally, in terms of resources, well, what if I wanna lock down communications? I may create a network security group, again, its own resource, which I then attach to enforce at the subnet level, or maybe even the NIC level, but we prefer to do them at the subnet. So I may pay, I probably will be paying for the public IP, basic or standard. I pay for the VM, I pay for the disk, and I would pay for that network egress. I would pay for the peered traffic, I would pay for if I'm using private endpoints. So there are many different Azure resources we can see and play here. The VM, the NIC, network security groups, public IPs, disks, virtual networks. And if we were to go ahead and look at a virtual machine, and here I'm looking at the resource group that I have a virtual machine in, we can quickly see a selection of those. Yes, I can see I have the virtual machine. Then we can see I have a network interface. Then we can see I have an OS disk. I also have an optional public IP 
and I have a network security group that I'm using with this virtual machine. If I had data disks, they would be separate resources as well. And you can see there's a whole combination of these available to me. What is a best practice is to use the resource groups to organize these. So I don't really want all of my resources scattered around everywhere. So when we think about the VM has to live in a resource group, try and put all of the resources together that make up that virtual machine. So I would definitely think about, hey, the disks for that virtual machine, the network interface, the public IP, would all be part of the same resource group. The virtual network probably would not be, that might be managed by a different group of people, but we put things together that have that common life cycle, maybe common sets of permissions into that resource group. So those are the resources we think about for virtual machines. There might be extensions, there might be other services we lend to this to bring other things up. I might connect to a log analytics workspace to send metrics and logs to for virtual machine insights. I might use Azure Bastion to help me get a managed jump box to this. But if I think about just that core VM resource, these are the things I would typically think about.